Hi guys, my name is Michelle and I create hair, makeup and lifestyle content here on YouTube. Some of you asked me to make a video on how I color my hair. So that's exactly what this video is about. So if that sounds like something that interests you, then keep watching. Alright, so my hair coloring routine. Very honestly, it's really nothing special and I don't feel like I've perfected it. But some of you wanted to see a video and so this is pretty much what I do. Alright, so what you'll notice is most of my hair, so basically from here onwards, is a different color and my roots are a different color. I started to color my hair darker because I realized that darker hair looks much better on camera and darker hair is more glossy, more shiny and so I switched colors in between. So what is the color that I have on the lengths of my hair? I'm gonna put a little pop-up right here and this is exactly the color. I'll also leave it linked down below so you can check that out. And on my roots, I have the color Be Blunt in coffee brown and this is what I've been using recently. So some of you also know that recently Garnier became cruelty free and so I decided to check out their colors. This is the shade Caramel Brown in 5.32. So this color does not have any ammonia, it's a temporary hair color and this lasts for 8 weeks. However, I didn't like this so much because whenever I color my hair, I don't color all of it. I just color the roots and I let the rest of it be because obviously I'm not wanting to tamper with my porosity that much, right? I'm looking for grey coverage. However, if you feel like you want to experiment, then I'll put down some of these colors. I checked them out quite a bit. However, when I use this color, I noticed that my roots were getting really light and so they weren't really looking nice and not really blending because when your roots are a darker color, you'll notice that your hair looks much more rich. You'll get a really nice ombre effect if your roots are a darker color and your lengths are a little lighter. And so I've switched from this. However, if you guys want to dabble in like temporary color and you're just looking for a little bit of color for like a short period of time, then I would say go with this. This has no ammonia. So technically in comparison to a permanent hair color, this would be a little less damaging. Now the Be Blunt color that I'm using, this also says that it's a temporary hair color and also it has 100% grey coverage. However, what I notice is once I color with this, I don't really have to go and touch up my roots. I feel like the color totally lasts and I really don't have to do too much. So if you ask me for my opinion on which one I feel is better, I like the Be Blunt one a little more because I notice that the color lasts a little longer. Okay, so I'm gonna insert a little slide about permanent versus temporary hair colors right here. Feel free to screenshot this section. So let me take you through what my hair coloring process looks like. <laughs> Alright, but before I show you, I want to caveat this and tell you that look, I'm not a professional hairstylist and there could be like a million mistakes that I'm making. However, I have been coloring my hair on my own for so many years now and this is typically what I do. But I'm not claiming that any of this is perfect. Since you guys wanted to see exactly what I do at home, I'm making this video. I'm using the Be Blunt hair color today. In the box, you get the color itself in a tube, a developer and a silicone serum, which I'm not going to use. You also get a pair of gloves. I mix the color and the diffuser in a bowl. And now I'm taking out my braids. This is dirty unwashed hair. I'll be talking about the braids that I usually wear on day 5, 6 and 7 in my detangling tips video, so stay tuned for that. On my previous wash day, I had used the Enliven and the Curl Up Gel together, so my clumps didn't have too much hold. I just put some water and some leave-in conditioner on my hair and I'd braided it up in order to protect it from tangling further. And as you can see, the braids have given me a very pretty wave pattern and this is how much my roots have currently grown out. I'm going to take the mixture and start on a deep side part and apply color only to my roots. I'll make sure that the hair on either side of my roots are saturated with color.
If you get any color on your forehead, you can easily remove it later with some acetone. I'll apply in combing motions, treating the hair as slices and then move on to the next part. Apply the color on either side of the part and then run your fingers a little deeper into the section so that the hair in between two parts gets some color as well. So you want to dig a little deeper with your fingers and go beyond the parting that you created to get the hair that is in the middle of each part. To be very honest, I cheat a little bit. I pay very close attention to my front and side sections but the back and under sections of my hair receive very little attention which is probably why the hair on these sections are less damaged and are lower porosity. So, for my under sections, I merely slide my fingers into those areas in an attempt to cover the greys there. Then I'll push my hair back and cover my front sections thoroughly, making sure that I haven't left any hair uncolored. Then I put my hair up into a ponytail and then I cover the bottom sections. I slide my fingers into those areas in an attempt to cover all the greys at the back. I'm going to leave this on for 40 minutes and then I'm going to wash it off with shampoo and conditioner. I will not be detangling. Also, I'm not inserting any footage of me washing the color off my hair because very honestly, I don't want to ruin a perfectly good swimming costume in the process. Because when I wash the color off, a lot of the color starts running and this leaves nasty stains. However, just to mention things, I use the Northwish Naturals shampoo and the curl up conditioner on this wash day. I let my hair dry naturally, I put a little leave-in conditioner into it and I put it up in braids again. The next day I took my braids out, I deseed my hair and then I styled as usual. So the footage you're about to see right now is basically the next day. Okay, so you saw me going from grey roots to darker roots and these are what my roots look like. Another thing that I really enjoy about my hair color is that the moment the light changes, my hair looks different. So under white light, my hair looks different. Under yellow light, my hair looks more tinted and more brown. And in sunlight, the color looks so nice and so rich. So literally, it's almost like I have different colors. And I really enjoy that feeling of knowing that my hair looks different and I'm sporting different colors. However, the color that you're seeing on my hair, this is pretty much what it's always been. So from the beginning of my content journey till now, these are pretty much the only colors that I've had on my hair. However, you would agree that my hair looks different, especially when I'm in my living room and the lighting is yellow. Then you'll notice that my hair looks a little more brown, a little more rich. However, when I come into different lighting conditions, so when I'm under white light, you'll see that my hair looks different. But it's pretty much been the same. Whenever I color my hair, I only color my roots and I don't color the rest of it. And as I said, nowadays I prefer to have my roots like a darker color. This is what we're looking like after coloring. As you can see, all of my roots are covered. I don't have any grays anymore. And the next time I would have to do this would be like in four weeks. But I noticed that my roots still stay nice and dark and I only have to color the little bits that grow out. So that was pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, then there's a very good chance that you might enjoy one of these. And feel free to go through my channel. You'll find so much content if you're interested in hair care.